Yay, we're alive. Let's see. I'm just going to pin this. Okay. Hey. Hey. Okay, let me go on here. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome. The very first Wealthy Women Wednesday. Let me just make sure I post on my wall that we are live now. Hi. Welcome, welcome. We are live. All right, I'm just post on my wall so people can see it. All right, that is done. All right, yay! Welcome, welcome. Very first, the very first. Wealthy Women Wednesdays. Are you excited? I'm super excited, guys. We have a special guest. Um, before I get ahead of myself, for those of you who know me, my name is Kaisha Williams, aka Unapologetically Kaisha. I go by that on social media. I am an entrepreneur and success coach to millennial women and also the founder of Wealthy Women Elite Consulting. Um, I am super excited because I have been wanting this for so long and now we're here. A live series with a different co-host every week speaking about um, focus on key factors for financial growth spirituality motivation increasing confidence while looking fierce as millennial entrepreneur women so I am so so excited um, a little bit about me I have been doing consulting for ever but um, <laughs> officially getting paid for it for about a year now. Um, I absolutely love what I do. It is a passion of mine. It just comes so naturally to me and I love being able to give women the things that I can see within their business that they would not usually see for themselves. So I am super excited. Our guest today is Angela Johnson. She'll hop on here within maybe about two or three minutes. And um, she also has a consulting agency that's focused around, you know, grants and um, employing employment and resume building and things like that and um, all of that. So it's going to be a good half an hour. So I'm just super, super excited. Hi, there goes Angela. Angela's joining. Okay. Got a wave. So I know there's a um, a button you can push to where you want to join in on the live. So just hit that button and then we can go ahead and get started. Um, but it's exciting to be here. Whenever you you know hit that hit that button. <laughs> um, I'm just super excited, y'all. It's the very first. The very first, and it's the Fourth of July, and I don't know where how the weather is where you are, but here in Minnesota, it is raining. It is raining, and it's sad and dark and all that. We gonna get through it anyway. Hopefully, it's dry enough to where we can have fireworks later tonight. We'll see. Hi, Angela. <laughs> Hello. So you see me? I can see you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Look, I told you my hair together real quick. I had to just do some. I, it's cute. It's cute. But mine is not all the way together, but it's, it's, it's working. It's working. Yes. <laughs> That's all that ever matters, that it's working and we got it together. So I'm so excited. Are you excited? I'm, I feel like I'm like cheesing like a new, like I'm in a candy store. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited to be a part of it. And then just also, you know, that you even asked me to be a part of it. So I'm yeah. really blessed and excited to do it. So Yeah. And the fact that you are, you chose and wanted to be like the very first guest. I'm just so happy. And I'm so honored for you to be like, yeah, of course I'll do it. You know, like I'm so happy and excited. I, I thank you. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Like, <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. So. We can hop right into the interview. Um, for those who don't know 
who Angela is. I told you a little bit before she hopped on, but um, <laughs> if you don't mind telling them a little bit about what you do, that mm -hmm. would be great. Okay, so I am the principal consultant and founder of Job Mojo Consulting Firm. Um, I launched my business in September of 2016. Um, at the time, I was working a full-time job and launching my business. So it was something that I wanted to do 10 years ago, but I felt like I needed more work experience and just more experience in life before I launched my business and be fully dedicated to doing that. And yeah. so, um, yeah, through a lot of prayer, um, a lot of support, um, I was able to make that happen in September of 2016. So here I am. Yay! It's so often that, like, those fear consume us. And we, we typically, mm -hmm. ready, but in our head, it's like, nah, not yet. Not yet, bro. We're going to wait a little bit. <laughs> yes. So that holds us up a lot. And I knew yeah. for me that it was definitely holding me up from pursuing what I wanted to do. And for me, it was more or less about, a, you know, creating a legacy for myself um, yeah. outside of just working, going to work and coming home and doing kind of the status quo. I wanted to do something that I felt like was helping other people to live their best life. So I felt through my business, I could do that you know, and helping people to assess really their career and how it would help them and benefit them and their families. So yeah. for the long run. So yeah. that's, 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 uh, I love that because I'm all about <laughs> changing the trajectory of your family's outcome for so long, especially as people of color, you know, we tend to not have the generational wealth as other, you know, ethnicity. <laughs> important for us the people to know our value and our worth and to you know get more obtain more and want more for not only ourselves but for our children so right definitely okay so let's get started in the interview angela um i'm trying to make this a half an hour segment we'll see how <laughs> how it goes <laughs> uh, I'm it. I'm it. <laughs> but the very first question i want to ask you is um what did your 12 year old self want to be when you grow up what how did you see yourself as an adult Okay, so when I was 12, <laughs> when I was 12, I wanted to be a lawyer. I thought that that was the end all be all. Yeah. Um, so I was just like, you know, I, I was pretty much dead set on that. So I got around people and my mom, you know, it, at the time, my mom was not, uh, she did not go to um, like, you know, college and get an undergrad degree or, or go to graduate school. So, but she did go to business school for a couple of years. And so I had a look, she knew a little bit, but she put me around people who um, had done those things. So um, I kind of had, in a sense, a mentor from a young age, um, kind of seeing it through my mom, but also through other people as well, too. And so that kind of helped me to figure out along the way that if I wanted to, I could change my mind. I didn't have to necessarily go that route. So, um but yeah, as 12 years old, I definitely saw myself as being an attorney. Yeah, that's awesome that you were able to even towards that young because that doesn't happen. That exactly. Doesn't happen. <laughs> it that doesn't. Happen. Awesome. That is super amazing. What made you change your mind? So I think, you know, I did a lot of internships. I worked with people who were attorneys. And I saw that that wasn't necessarily the life I wanted to live. A lot yeah. of them were stressed. A lot yeah. of them were bad. Um, and I felt like, okay, I'm going to school for all these years to do something that I'm going to still be stressed. I'm still be mad every day. Um, yeah. And I'm not going to always feel like I'm doing good work. Um, right. Because a lot of lawyers, in order for them to make the type of money they want to make, you have to sacrifice a lot. And sometimes your integrity is included in that. So, yeah. you know, I knew for me that wasn't what I wanted to do. Yeah. Um, that's how I kind of changed my mind. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome because even as an entrepreneur, you know, we sacrifice a lot, but at the mm -hmm. same time, sacrificing our integrity. That's one thing that goes with us no matter where we go in life. We have that mm -hmm. option, um, you know, continue doing us and be great and helping others or we can do the opposite and it's up to us totally not up to someone else who's paying us you know um, mm -hmm. 
But um, I want to also ask you, who was your biggest role model or influencer um, that motivated you every day? Um, I, well, I actually have a, a couple. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Definitely, I would say my mom. My mom has always supported me throughout every decision, throughout every part of my life. Yeah. Um, he has been kind of a godsend for me, and and also my father as well. I mean, both of them have equally been very supportive um, of just everything that I've wanted to do because I've done things that are outside of what they ever, you know, did in a sense. Um, I didn't go the, the typical corporate route. You know, I worked jobs. I stayed on some jobs. Um, but I've, I've moved around a lot in my career, and I've done it by myself. You know, they, they've had each other as they've grown up together. But I had me. So, you know, and I've done a lot of things that have been very unconventional, I would say. Um, so, but in all of that, they have always supported me throughout every part of my life. So I would say definitely my parents have been my role models. That is beautiful. That's amazing. Yeah, parents are, they play a huge role. And sometimes, you know, you don't always, you don't always get that support. But especially mm -hmm. when they're something like us, when we're entrepreneurs and we're chasing after something that they can't physically see and they don't know what the hell it is, you know. Exactly. <laughs> dream and only we can see it and they're like what are you doing go get a real job you know right, but right. It, <laughs> it makes sense them coins rolling like oh okay now i see so <laughs> yes yes um what is your favorite book or what's your current read and and why are you reading that or why is it your favorite book right now okay so my favorite book is um the year of yes by shonda Rhimes. yes i'm reading that right now yes <laughs> So awesome. I love that book. Um, I, I read it a couple of years ago during a time when I felt like, you know, definitely when I was definitely exploring launching my business, um, just kind of stepping out on faith and trying to figure out how I was going to do that um, and be OK with it myself, despite whatever anybody had to say, any comments that I heard. Yeah. Along the way, um, like people saying, what are you doing? Like, why are you leaving a full time job with benefits in a 401k and this and that? And yeah. so I was like, you know, I read that book and the things that I saw that Shonda Rhimes sacrificed and the things that she went through and just her journey of saying yes. I was like, you know, I need to say yes to myself, too. I owe myself this. If I don't do anything else in my life, I feel like I owe myself to be my best self and to live my best life. So yeah. I felt like I could do that through creating my own thing. That's right. Oh, that's right. Yes, I love that. I love it. I love it. The fact that you're able to get out of that scarcity mindset, like, you know what? Somebody else. I got this. <laughs> you know? That's yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let's get into the, the nitty gritty. Um, well, one more question before I do that. If your life was a book, because you talked about books, what mm -hmm. would this chapter of your life be called? Uh, so chapter 37. <laughs> it would be called chapter 37 because I'm 36. So I'll be 37 in 10 days. Uh, and um, I would say that it would be called that mainly because, of course, you know, I'm, I'm getting ready to turn a whole year older. But also, I'm just in a better place in my life. Like, I feel more comfortable with who I am and where I want to go. And um, and so I, I couldn't say that 10 years ago. I couldn't say that even probably five years ago. <laughs> And so I finally feel like, you know, I'm kind of coming into my own as a woman and just like feeling out, you know, kind of where I want to go and not necessarily being afraid of that. And also and like hearing every negative thing, you know, I kind of let that fall by the wayside. And I'm like, OK, I got to live and do for me because life is short and you really need to figure out what you want to do, what you have a passion to do. And make that work. And don't worry about what other people have to say and that other people don't agree necessarily with the path that you're choosing. Mm -hmm. As long as, and for me, I believe in God. So I think as long as I have that connection and um, and I make sure that God is okay with what I'm doing, then I'm good. 
So yeah, yeah it would definitely be chapter thirty seven. <laughs> that chapter. I wanna read yeah. that. <laughs> you not girl, it's gonna be a series. Like I'm writing a book, like several books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that sounds really good. Um, okay, so how did you get into your industry? So I have a little over 14 years of experience working in grant-related positions oh. um, and also just in uh, career industry. Like, I've been working since I was 16, yeah. um, actually paying taxes since I was 16. So um, I have, and I've worked so many different types of jobs, but all, pretty much all-inclusive and in working with public policy. So that's kind of how I maneuvered into it. And I mean, my undergrad degree is in criminal justice. I have a master's in public administration with a focus in local government. And then um, I did work on my PhD for a year and um, in Houston. And, you know, and I still kind of think about whether or not I even want to finish that. But it's something that, you know, I definitely have to be fully engaged in if I am going to do it. Um, but right now, my my full focus is definitely on my, you know, my business and building it um, and also building other businesses as well. So this is one step towards that. But I also have other things that I'm working on um, because I, I definitely am, I feel like a in a sense, there's this term called um, serial entrepreneur. So, you know, I'm, I'm definitely looking at other avenues to generate income so um, that can live on beyond me. So. Yeah, absolutely. Residual mm -hmm. income, sleep coins is what I call them. Sleep right, coins. right. So you make money while you sleep. <laughs> coins in the bank, like where that come from? That's, that's exactly. what <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's super important. Um, okay, so I have a question because I know you've been in the industry for many, many years. You you mm -hmm. saw it all. Um, a lot of people are entrepreneurs, but there are people who are watch this who um, are looking for ways to find the job that they want and the, the perfect job mm -hmm. for them as well. So what is one thing you would say that needs to be on a resume? Like what's one thing you just should not leave out of a resume? Uh, so let me just say this first. I think so we live in a time when things are very different. Everybody is social media this and everybody wants stuff like right then. And most people are going to these different sites like so there's something called Canva. I'm sure you probably have used Canva to yep. create. Different things. And so Canva has all these different templates for resumes now. Um, there's things like Microsoft Word. Microsoft Word has a lot of templates for resumes. They have. I, yeah, I think that people get um, very consumed by all this, you know, color and all these things on their resume. I really feel like you need to keep it very simple. I don't feel like you need all of that. Some people, because what people have to realize in most of these companies is still old school people. So they want to see still some of the old school type stuff. They don't want to see colorful yellow bold all over your resume. <laughs> they don't want to see any of that. Um, they still kind of want it to be general. Like you put your education, you put your skill set. I think it's very important to have a list of skills on a resume. And honestly, I wouldn't really want to see one without it. Um, I look at resumes all the time. So that's one thing I can say that I would never leave off a resume is just little, some little bullet points about your general skills. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, of course, your work experience. So, yeah. 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 So when you apply for a job, how soon or how do you know when to follow up, you know, to say mm -hmm. hey, I to HR or whatever to get an interview? How, what, what's the time or is there a time frame for that? I don't feel like there is like if you apply and usually well this is the thing I think it's very important when you apply for a job that you look at the close date of that job mm -hmm. because depending upon what industry you're you're going into so for me I, you know I've applied for a lot of jobs in public policy so a lot of those jobs have close dates mm -hmm. if you have a close date do not con contact them before that close date right wow <laughs> the close day because they don't really want to hear from you they have several resumes that are coming in 
and they're kind of deciphering. They're probably putting them in a stack, and they have people in HR or someone, you know, in managerial level who are looking at those resumes as they come in, but they typically do not want you to contact them before the close date. Wow. Okay. That's good. I never even thought of that. So yeah. I've learned something new. Light bulb. <laughs> Light bulb. Yeah. Um, also help with like grant assistance. How, how do you help in that? How, how do you assist in that way? So um, like I said, and a lot of the experience that I have is in grant related type of work. Um, so I do things, anything from like helping people to research different grants for their business or for their, you know, if they have a nonprofit or if they have a for profit, I'll help them to look at different avenues to receive funding. But then also on the other end of that, there's the actual grant application process. So I'll help them with looking at, okay, well, should they even apply for that? Is that even feasible for their organization? Because a lot of the times when you talk about grant money, especially federal grants, you need to have the capacity to be able to handle that grant. Um, right. A lot of people apply for grants, they may get the money, but they don't have the staff on hand to take care of the paperwork for that grant. So federal grants require a lot of work. It's a lot of red tape. But foundational grants don't require as much work. So depending upon the industry that they're in and what they're actually trying to do, I will try to hook them up with particular opportunities so that they can um, find money that works the best for their organization. So that's some of what I do as well, too. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Yes, I love that, girl. Mm -hmm. I know. I be scared. I hear grants and I get scared. A grant? Yeah. I, I got to fill out how many forms? I think a grant into college. You would have to fill out, you know, the the, the three page page. You know, You know, that's what I think. Exactly. And <laughs> yeah, this is the thing, though. Foundation grants. You don't have to do all of that. Like, there's a letter of intent. And it's like a one pager and wow. you put information on there. You let them know, you know, what your organization is about, how much money you actually need. You submit that in. They let you know if they're going to give you the money or not, usually. Or if you can apply, if you can fill out like a, they might have like a two or three page application. Yeah. So foundations are just easier. But yeah. when you talk federal money, it's a lot of red tape. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. and that's Really because you have to be you have to be a person who um, is accountable, held accountable for public money, because you get public money when you're talking about you know um, federal grants. So yeah. you know that's our dollars that's going into that. Right, right. <laughs> true, it's true. All right. So where would what, what would you say um, nonprofits go wrong mm -hmm. when it's been planning? I would say definitely. Again, the capacity, like a lot of nonprofits don't necessarily have all the staff in place yeah. to take care of everything that they need for that particular event. And they may go ahead and sign a contract to do an event with someone and they just don't have the capacity level to be able to like, you know, take care of that event to from the beginning through the end. And yeah. I think that's a big problem like you know and you want to give your you want to have a good name and you don't want to like over I guess like you know be like over promising things right so and that's one thing that I think some nonprofits tend to do and they go wrong with that so you definitely need to make sure that you have the staff on hand to take care of everything that you're trying to do for that particular event yeah definitely mm -hmm. uh, well what for that Going off of that, what is one way you would say that they can avoid that mistake? Or what's one thing they can do to, you know, keep that from happening to them? Um, I definitely think it's important to have partnerships. Um, a lot of people tend to not want to ask for help. So mm -hmm. I think it's very important to, like, partner with other people who can help you to get your event done and be successful in doing that. So um, one of the things that I encourage nonprofits when I talk to people who are doing different work, I always encourage them to say, okay, well, do you know another organization who's possibly doing something similar to what you're doing? And typically there are several organizations who are doing some of the same type of work. Yeah. And all you have to do is go in, set up a meeting, 
go and talk to the director, ask them, you know, would you mind helping me with this this event? We both trying to pursue the same type of thing. We all trying to help the community, right? So you present that to them, typically they will say yes. I mean, really the only option the board they can say is no. Hello. And so that's how I look at everything. I'll be like, okay, I can at least ask. The worst you can say is no. <laughs> so, if that's the worst possible answer, then I'm not, you know, just do it. Exactly. No doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. You know, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. No, we hear no every day. So if you want to say no to me, I mean, that's the, that's the worst of it, then come on now, just ask. Just ask. Exactly. Okay. okay. Um, well, I have another question. Um, what are gonna mostly end it but when you simply mm -hmm. don't feel like it mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't feel like doing nothing today i just i'm not in that mood what mm -hmm. keeps you going what's the one thing or, or or what are the the things that you do that keeps you going day to day when you just simply do not feel like it um i would say so i am a big i read a lot but i also listen to podcasts um and try to just kind of get out of my own head mm -hmm. about life right because we all go through those times where we just don't feel like doing anything and we just really want to just lay around or go and hang out with our friends or whatever like you just don't want to deal with the day-to-day -day, right of trying to figure out how to make money and this and that so um I think for me, it's definitely kind of regrouping. I do a lot of meditation. Yes. Um, I use this app called Calm. I don't know if you use that. Yes. Or, I have that. I love yes. that app. I turn it on and I meditate. Like I meditate for probably about 15 to 20 minutes. Um, and then I may go and do a yoga class. But I do things that kind of get me back in that mode of like Angela you got to get your work done like it's work and there's money to be made so you got to get out here and get it because you don't really have the time to like sit around and be like whoa is me like I don't have that type of time so you know I have to kind of regroup and make sure I take an and do self-care um that's very important to me so yeah, definitely because I swear when you're trying to get your your own money and you're not on a clock for nobody it's exactly. it's exciting at first but when those checks mm -hmm. start rolling in you get kind of this mindset of well shit i just don't feel like <laughs> and right like, and like, like, <laughs> but then you don't get paid either you know? exactly. guys keep in mind that if you have any questions for angela or myself definitely leave it in the comments we want to answer those um we're going to get off here in a couple minutes but we want to make sure that we hit any questions you may have to her pointing towards um you know anything she stated whether it's um employment resumes whether it has something to do with grants definitely let her know we want to answer any of those questions you may have for herself or for myself as well yeah in the time um i love affirmations affirmations mm -hmm. is every day um i have an affirmation of the day that goes on my story on here on instagram um, and I'm just, I'm writing, um, a journal now with affirmations, daily affirmations of how to, you know, write your own and things like that, which is in the making. <laughs> it will be out soon, but, um, I do want to ask you, what is your affirmation of the day? Have you thought about it? I, okay. So I have so many that I keep hanging up. It's really crazy. I'm a, um, affirmation person too. But you know, this one is by Rumi, which is, I mean, I think it's like she, uh, he is a Persian uh, poet from like years and years ago. But this one is called, it says, yesterday I was clever, so I wanted to change the world. Today I am wise, so I am changing myself. Um, and so I that post because... You know, it just, it's like a constant reminder, like, you know, it's not just about people out here in this world. Sometimes we have to kind of look at ourselves in the mirror and do self-reflection and be like, yeah. okay, I might need to change some things about myself in order to get to where I'm trying to be, right? So um, I think that's important, like, to always kind of, you know, evaluate yourself before you go out here trying to check everybody else and what they doing and not doing. So
sometimes, you know, you might be the problem. So a lot of the times, you know, I have to look at myself as I'm sitting up here thinking about all this other stuff in the world. It's like, you know, what can I do to be better today? And, you know, the next day and the next day. That's my goal. Yeah. And the fact that you recognize mm -hmm. that people so often, a lot of the times they mm -hmm. want to change everybody around them and not do any self-reflection. When you realize yeah. that once you elevate, your circle elevates as well. Then you look yeah. at life, you look at like people look at you and are inspired by you taking action. Therefore, they mm -hmm. want to take action as well. And they want right. to make a you can see they see success coming towards you. If she can do it, I know I can do it. You know, so mm -hmm. I, I love that. Effort. I'm gonna have to like steal that one. Okay. Yeah, girl, it's so uh, many though, but this is one I keep posting. Like I look at it every day, and I'm like, okay, what what can I do better today? You know, to like just be better, be a better person, and um and all of that. Because we all out here trying to figure it out. Nobody has it all together. And I think, you know, no matter how you look at somebody's life, nothing is ever, like, 100 all good. Like, everybody yep. is struggling with some things. Yep. So I think when we go out here, try to be the best that you can to other people. Try to put a smile on their face, you know, because sometimes other people need it, too. Like, I need motivation. You need motivation. We all need it to, like, make it out here. So. Right. 100%. I totally agree. You know, let let I, I feel like I tell my kids when they go to school and their friends, mm -hmm. they're, um, you know, a, a queen or a king as, as African people, you know, mm -hmm. and she, she believes she, my friends will believe this. And it's like, look, I tell her, let your light shine, okay? When you, when you talk as yourself and, and you're you're um glowing your light shines on your friends and then they can they can see who they are through you so just yeah. leave, you know, love it yourself, and everyone around you will start to love them as well so yeah i girl i totally agree but i love i'm using that tomorrow that's gonna be tomorrow <laughs> For sure. Use it. <laughs> i'm using it tomorrow it's stolen, it's stolen. um when i look through the comments i see there's a lot of comments on here okay i don't I don't see too many questions. Okay. But I do see, I don't know. Let me see. Um, thank you for letting each other. Look, that happened. That happened yeah. long time. You know that? I always drop my phone or my tablet or whatever I'm using. I always drop something. But um, it's see. okay. You back on it. <laughs> <laughs> One time it failed and I didn't have like, any shorts on it, it just fell right where you know. Oh my god, you can't say that's not the best one. <laughs> I'm so learn from that to just, yeah, you know, put my hands, but exactly. <laughs> exactly. But, um, yeah, I think we just have a lot of just random, um, good, good comments, but no, no, mm -hmm. but okay. Um, I, I want to say well, if you guys have any questions later on, you know, y'all can all follow my page. So it's Job Mojo Consulting Firm. And so I have Instagram and also Twitter. I, I don't tweet as much as I probably should. I'm trying to get there, but I'm just not there yet. But, um, and then of course, Facebook. Um, so, you know, I have a group and I also have a, a business page on there. So. Yeah, yeah, if anybody has that was coming. Yeah, it's Job Mojo. Um, that's on Instagram, and then on um, my Facebook is Job Mojo Consulting Firm. Yes. Okay. Y'all get that now. Go follow her. And I say yeah. she, knows her follow shit. Me. she knows her shit, and she is <laughs> on it. So you cannot go wrong with Angela. Okay, she's a, she's about that. She about it. She about For it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you so, so much for being the You're best. Welcome. I hope you enjoy your fourth. You know, if you celebrate, everybody know I got I to gotta be mindful. Everybody doesn't celebrate, you know, Independence Day. I'm Juneteenth um, all, all the way, Juneteenth. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but but I, I am going to enjoy the day, though. I'm still going to enjoy my day because it's still, you know, it's still a day. So we have to just enjoy for what it is. And, uh, yeah, so, yeah, it'll be good. Day, our work. It's done for the day. I mean, my work yeah. is this is for the day, and this is like yeah. you know, best work to have when something you're passionate about, something that you love, and it comes naturally to you. So, 
girl, look at us. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> um, Thank you so much. Thank you all for joining us. We had a good, a good, a good viewing today. Um, yes, it was awesome. Okay, so watch. I appreciate y'all logging in. Yay! Okay, see you all time next Wednesday for the next Wealthy Women Wednesdays. Um, and yeah, peace and love. Bye. Bye, everybody.